Welcome to the Vini Curiosity October 2021 case. Last what case of the year or for Vini Curiosity and first one where we have been awarded runners up, which is great, in the Decanter Retail Awards. And we also won Best Italian Specialist. I'm very excited about that. Um, and I think so much of it actually goes, it comes down to Vini Curiosity and it's enabled us to buy some really interesting wines and and to if you like reset your mind just really concentrate on certain styles and this case kind of sums up an awful lot of the styles that we've been going for it's a mixture of classics of new wines slightly quirky wines so we'll start off with what I would describe as an absolute classic. I didn't really want to put this in this month's case, but shipping has caused a few problems this year so far um, because I gave you the Yelka 2015 in the January case. This is 2016 vintage. Honestly, the two wines are not massively dissimilar. 16 is, I think it's better. I like it. It's just not quite such a hot vintage as a 15, but incredibly pure fruit, a little bit more subdued, a little bit more elegant, absolute ripeness, very, very fine. And this wine does something which is something I really like about the Friuli. Many of the producers in the Friuli have gone down to the Chardonnay Sauvignon route, um, making cheap Pinot Grigio in the centre in the Grave district pulling up their vines and planting Grera to make Prosecco. Um, in this part, the Collio, this is a sub-district -dist which is best known for its white wines. Arguably, they are Italy's finest white wines. Um, Roberto's stuck to the native grapes. So this is, it's named after his mother and it has, this is a wine with huge respect for the history of the territory. So it's based on Ribola Gialla with Malvasia and with Friulano. Um, the aging of each wine or the, the, the way that he treats each grape type is different, but he'll make the assemblage and then age wine together in uh, concrete amphoras or concrete eggs rather for, for three years. So this has been treated the same way really as a Barolo. The idea is to release a wine which is complex, rich, and when it's released onto the market, it's going to give you remarkable complexity um, and weight. A really serious white wine. Um, and so this is 2016. It's been released at the same time as most of the Barolos. It's, it's an astonishing wine. And it will age for a bit longer as well. And we bought as much of it as we could afford. Um, and it's, it's great. I highly recommend you to put a few, put a few in the cellar. It's great, great wine. Um, then we go to Roccafiore. Now, Roccafiore... Equally interesting, but for slightly different reasons. Um, we've just come back from there and they've done, they're, they're in the, the Todi area. And the main grape of Todi is called Grachetto di Todi. So Grachetto from Todi. It's very, it's a biotype that's very different from Grachetto di Orvieto. It's, it's quite a lot better, I believe. Um, and when they went into this area, this area, the Todi area, it had no reputation for quality. Uh, a few cantinas were making perfectly drinkable wine, but there was nothing really there of quality. And they're one of the vanguard of really interesting producers who've come in uh, with an idea. And their idea was to create a, a very much organic, sustainable winery with an agriturismo. And the agriturismo, they, they started building at the same time as the winery. So the agriturismo has a wellness, clinic underneath, well, clinics, not really clinics, hot tub, pools, sauna, that sort of stuff. Um, it's got a restaurant on the first floor. It's got an infinity pool that looks out to Todi across the vineyard. It's blooming lovely. And eight, nine rooms upstairs. I'm not exactly sure how many, but they've, they've just done it in a beautiful, beautiful way. And actually the website doesn't do it justice. It's much, much nicer, I believe, than the their website makes it look superbly done. Um, and the vineyards they planted on north facing slopes again, way ahead of their time. This is late nineties. And they realized already that to get the, the, the aromatics, the gentler elements from the Grachetto, they needed them on north facing slopes. So superb work. And, and luckily they've got a mountain sitting behind which provides constant breezes. So the north facing slopes aren't a problem. Now, um, this wine, however, when they did set it up, they needed old vines to make a great wine. So they bought this vineyard at the same time. So Fior Fiore is made from old vines. Um, it's wine that's been fine tuned, if you like, since the nineties. 
And, and, and uh, it's, it's one of the great wines from Umbria, one of the great white wines. I think we've got a couple of the really good ones, Pomario and this, they're both from Grachetti di Tori, and they're both absolutely amazing wines. The only one which we don't really have yet is uh, Spolatino, um, but that may or may not come. I'm not sure how much better they are than this. This is, this is superb. So amphora aging, the idea is to give texture, weight, freshness always important to give freshness and this is a Trebicchieri with the Gambero Rosso so it's it's a wine that's taken very seriously it's a wine that maybe doesn't have tradition for quality wines but this is the start of the move if you like for Todi moving into the top tier still brilliant value it's a great great wine um then we go to Matt the ancestral white now this is English this is from Walton Brook um Walton Brook don't have a history of quality sparkling wines they they, they make wine but more standard, if you like English wines. Um, Matt has taken over the running of the vineyard and the winemaking. So he's really taken over Walton Brook, actually. Um, and this is this is astonishing wine. This is first ever vintage, it's Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris. Uh, the, it's, he calls it the ancestral pink, so ancestral pink. So ancestral refers to the method that it's made by, the ancestral method, which is you make the wine normally, um, so it's still wine, and then bottle it, add a bit of a dosage to, to make the sparkling part, which is sealed with a crown cop. There's no remouage, so it's a bottle fermented wine, but without taking out the lees. So it's, um, or without taking out the yeasts. It's, it's really interesting wine. There's not too much pressure. Um, but do be careful when you open it. It does need time to settle down. It does need time. Treat it with some respect. It's a very natural product. Matt's done something really interesting. He basically is very low tech wine, but it's extremely well thought out. Every detail is beautiful. And it's some hedgerow in a glass. It's bloody lovely. It's really good wine. It's not much of it. Got a few cases. So if you are interested, snap that fast. It's going really, really quick. It's now, and the agency has now gone to one of the top natural wine distributors. So, you know, that's it's brilliant news for Matt. We're really, really happy. It's great. So, Paolo Petrilli, Agromante. Paolo Petrilli is really a tomato farmer. It's got one slope of vines, and I think I think it's a bit of a genius, actually. Andrea is the winemaker. Um, and again, really carefully thought out wines. Caccia Miti du Lucera is, is, is an old wine. You know, it's, it's not necessarily the oldest of the DOCs, but it's, it's a wine with a great history to it. And it literally means pour it, drink it from Lucera. Um, and the grapes here are Nero di Troia with some Sangiovese and Montepulciano, a bit of Bollino Bianco. Um, but he's fine tuned this wine rather fantastically. It's only made in the best vintages. So, 15 was made, the 16 wasn't made, this is the 17. This arguably is the greatest wine that he's made. I think it's fantastic. So a bit more texture, a bit more weight. Um, he's kind of taking an almost more Burgundian look at these wines. So they're not, it's not typical Pugliese winemaking at all. Much more elegant. So that lovely blueberry fruit that he seems to get, which is almost like a Tariga Nacional. Really, really fantastic wines, and I highly recommend cellaring these. They're, they're astonishing value still. Um, then we go to the big gun, if you like, the tasting in some ways, which is Antoniolo's Gattinara Reserva. Um, all of her wines are now bottled as Reserva. Reserva just means they're aged for longer. Honestly, they always have been Reservas, but she's now moving the wine, if you like, in line with uh, the regulations, just telling people what it actually is. It is a Gattinara Reserva from the 2016 vintage, which is an off the scale vintage. This is magnificent wine. Um, do drink the bottle, taste it, because if you're gonna put six bottles of anything down in your cellar this year, it should really be six bottles of Antonioli Reserva 2016. It's 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 just a truly magnificent wine. Um, so the same grape as Barolo, Gattinara, is another Nebbiolo village um, or town, really. Uh, but the expression is so different because here it's on volcanic subsoils. It's at a higher altitude. You're getting the same richness, but you're not quite getting the. You don't get the. Um, uh, you don't quite get the base that you get from 
Barolo, but you get so much more treble. So it's, it's just it's such an interesting one, it's superb one. Okay, and the last one, Primo Volo. So first flight, literally. And this was born uh, really on, on the way home for Andrea and Giordano after they'd been selling one in America. And Andrea supplied the bar of Barbera. Giordano supplied Barbera from, is from Querci Vignale actually, and in the Canelli province, so in Asti. And Giordano supplied a barrel of Merlot from the La Montecchio estate in the Colli Eugani. And they blended them together, made a fab wine. And then Sergio wants to come in on the party. He's from Rocco della Maggia, which is in Toscana, Chianti Classico. So he supplied Sangiovese. So the wine now is Sangiovese, Barbera, and Merlo. Bar. And each producer ages his wine for a while in Tono, then sends it up to Andrea. He makes the assemblage, ages it, bottles it, ka-ching, off it goes. Not really a classic baton bottle vini curiosity wine, but blooming lovely. It's 2012, so we've got some lovely age on this wine. That's nearly 10 years old. I, I've held this back for you a little bit. I won't, I won't deny it. There are a few things which I squirrel away in the warehouse and keep for vini curiosity, and this is one of them. Just brilliant wine. Just enjoy it. This, I, I kind of gave you this for a bit of fun for the Christmas table, and I hope you really enjoy it. So, for all of you new Vini Curiosity members, um, hope you enjoy this taste. For those of you who are thinking about it, please stop thinking about it and join. Um, for those who want to come to the tasting and don't have the samples, the samples are available on the website. Please just look up Vini Curiosity Tasting and you, it'll all come up. Um, and da -da -da, that's, that's probably about it for now, isn't it? Have a fantastic time and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye.